and your title is the blending of teaching learning pedagogy for higher education yes sir so so your time starts now you have 10 minutes to start welcome to you for the presentation is my screen visible to everybody yeah. Yes. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. The honorable jury members, organizers, and my co-participants. Myself, Priyanka Ray. I am assistant professor of Guru Nanak Institute of Pharmaceutical Science and Technology, Kolkata, West Bengal. Before I start, I would like to convey my gratitude to the organizers of this conference that they have given us this opportunity to present in this uh, conference through hybrid mode. The topic for today's presentation from my end is blended teaching learning pedagogies for higher education. The change is the only thing that is constant. The world has gone through a very crucial situation in the year 2020, that is the pandemic situation. It is said that every negative situation has some positivity into it. This pandemic situation has made us to think to re-innovate and recreate the teaching techniques. Before that also, we were working on it, but this pandemic situation has motivated us to accelerate the process. During this situation, we have encountered many difficulties because we had to take online classes. The whole mode was online. For that, we have developed many techniques. Today, I will be talking on the blended teaching learning pedagogy. What is blended learning? It is a combination of classroom training and e-learning, that is electronic learning, digital media. Both combines to make a blended learning pedagogy. Blended learning is a newer approach in the field of education, which combines the online teaching methodology with the traditional classroom methods. The techniques I have adopted for blended learning is as follows. Like the first one that I have gone through is the VAC technique. In VAC, V stands for visual, that is seeing, reading. The A stands for auditory, that is hearing and speaking. And kinesthetic is touching and doing. Since I am a professor of technical college, in my college, I have applied this in my teaching methodology. As you can see, that in the example of VAC technique, you can see there is a video which is explaining the process of homogenizing this process has been explained to the students by showing the videographs from maybe YouTube channels or by recording the lab equipment videos. After seeing this, I was also explaining them the whole technique. So visual and audio is complete. Thereafter, I have allowed my students to perform a hands-on practical by using this homogenization. Homogenization is a very crucial technique in the field of pharmacy, where the mixing of the different products of different phases has been done by the use of these homogenizer machines. As you can see in the image on the right, that my students are working in the lab and they are using the homogenization. So before the kinesthetic approach, that is they are allowed to touch it, I have gone through the visual and audio, both the techniques, completing the VAC technique. I have also applied the different techniques of brainstorming and teamwork. Like in the pharmaceutical education, there I used to teach about the pharmacy outlet, the retail outlet, the design, how it should be, any industry design. So they were asked to prepare some models. As you can see in the picture, my students are working on a model. So which is, uh, uh, you know, motivating them to create the teamwork efficiency in them. Also, it is uh, helping them to think on the preparation of model, how they can make it working or all. And the right image is showing the use of different electrodes in the laboratory. Field study is another thing that we can apply for uh, modern and innovative teaching techniques. In the left image, you can see that there is a medicinal garden in our institute where I have allowed the students to go, they, they check it, they see how the plant looks like. It is not only the biological name they will remember. If they look into the plant, how it looks like, they might identify it. And then I will be teaching them that what medicinal value the plant possesses. In the next image, you can see that there is an industrial visit of MSN laboratories where I have taken. This is me and this is the group of students that I have taken uh, for an industrial visit 
this MSN Laboratories Limited is in Hyderabad. This is a pharmaceutical company. So there I have taken the students for an industrial visit so that they can have a practical approach of what is happening in the pharmaceutical industry. Next approach is the project-based learning. I have been allotted several students under me for the project. They are from both UG level as well as PG level, that is B farm and M farm students, bachelors of pharmacy and masters of pharmacy. So you can see that uh, while uh, doing the project, I have made sure that they will have an approach for publication. They must publish a paper. So there you can see I have uh, shown the uh, papers which my students has published during their projects. All right. So this is another paper which the students have published during their project work. They have worked on it and they have published. This is a gallery proof which is to be published by first of May. These all are the project uh, publications. So we need to have a, a good uh, research hold. The students should uh, enhance their research capability. And if they are allowed to publish uh, in their undergraduate level only, they get motivated. Their research capacity will be enhanced. The next technique is the flipped classroom. Flipped classroom. In this particular technique, this is a very newer technique and our institute is the only pharmaceutical industry uh, institute in Eastern India which has adopted for this particular technique, the flipped classroom. In this technique, the there is before out of class and in class. So before the students prepare to participate in class activities, like we are sharing various online video lectures that has been prepared by us in their Google Classroom. And also we have an academic resource portal where it is shared. And then the uh, students will uh, go through those videos. They will prepare themselves. And next day when they are coming to the class, they will check their understanding by uh, extended learning when we are giving them some assignments, some teamwork, some uh, small project work, some exercise sheet to uh, do in the class. As you can see, I have given the clipping of one uh, lecture video that I have prepared. Let us move into the details of this topic. We start with the definition of the plant tissue culture. The definition of the plant tissue culture says that it is a technique of... So this was a clipping of the lecture videos. Likewise, we have prepared the lecture videos on all the topics. I have prepared it and I have made sure that the students go through it. I have posted it in this Google Classrooms and also in the academic resources. This has been uploaded. You can see that we are using, I'm using this Google Classroom. You can see that I have created the Google Classroom for different subjects. Uh, for different semesters, whichever has been allotted to me. And I'm sharing different study materials, lecture videos, even they were given the assignments in these classrooms. On the online mode, I have taken and continued the class on the uh, Google Meet platform where I have taken the classes during the pandemic, as well as now also, if it is required, we are taking it on the online modes. This is the sample of online assessment. By creating the Google form, we have taken this way. This Google form has been created and online assessment has been taken. This form link has been posted to their Google classrooms, which they are completing. This is also done during the classes when I am taking it in the offline mode because we are applying the flipped teaching. They are studying and they are uh, going through the lecture videos. And and come in one and a half minutes. You have okay, to finish okay. it fast. Okay, sir. Okay, we are. I'm about to finish it. So this is the screenshot of a Google form. Concluding my whole presentation, I'm just trying to uh, say that we need to have a proper Bloom's taxonomy and outcome-based teaching and learning. We are creating the future of our country. We need to have this approach, uh, which will go to the higher order skills, which starts from remembering and it leads to creating. So whatever teaching technique I have discussed in this whole presentation leads to the completion of this uh, Bloom's taxonomy and it uh, fulfills all the six levels of Bloom's taxonomy. These were the references where I have taken my presentation. With this, I would like to complete the quote of APG Abdul Kalam. Teaching is a very noble profession that shapes the character, caliber and future of an individual. If the people remember me as a good teacher, that will be the biggest honor for me. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Priyanka, ma'am. Thanks. Uh, Priyanka, I have one question. When you mentioned about the VAK technique, uh, yes. the type of video you show in experiment, sometimes the type of uh, 
equipment and the apparatus being used in the YouTube videos, they do not match our environment. So how do you handle that? Ma'am, if, if the basic principle is same for all the equipments, correct? If this is a homogenizer, you can see this video, we are maintaining the speed. There, it, there might be some differences in the, um, uh, what we say, in the tech, the, the technique is same, but there might be some differences in the construction. So I explain them the technique and I try to find out the similar looking or similar constructed equipments. And then when they are handling it in their lab, they get to understand it. The, it they have a clear idea about it. So it has okay. helped me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Priyanka. I think thank you so much. Move to the next presentation. Yes. Let me uh, stop sharing my screen just a minute, ma'am. So everyone should uh, understand we will not give any remarks. Fine. Yeah. So next is Ms. Richard here. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for mm -hmm. allowing me and accepting my paper. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm very thankful that I have been given this opportunity to present in front of uh, dignified people. So without wasting any time further, I am uh, starting off my presentation. I hope everybody can uh, see my presentation. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the title of my paper is Significance of knowledge about cyber safety while using social media for online learning. I am the presenting author. My name is Richard Heer and uh, the co-author of the paper is Professor Archana Kumar, who is also my PhD supervisor and we are from Lady Urban College, University of Delhi. So uh, we all know and we have seen that how social media has actually revolutionized human communication and how it has revolutionized because it offers multiple of features to us. These platforms have allowed all the users to build relationships, uh, network with people for uh, their personal uh, communication as well as for work-related communication, uh, share content as well as ac acquire knowledge with skills in their respective field of interest. So uh, uh, these online learning platforms are offering various ways in which uh, learning can be uh, acquired. And uh, learning is primarily uh, done uh, by these learners of higher education to gain knowledge sometimes. And for uh, sometimes they also uh, use these online learning platforms to seek help from their teachers and friends related to learning. Uh, then re for research work to learn about uh, various curricular aspects and sometimes also for collaborative learning. So online learning uh, through social media can happen by uh, enrolling uh, themselves into members uh, as members of groups and channels. We have all seen that in uh, COVID times, there were a lot of Telegram channels that were built. And on these Telegram channels and on, on these groups, there is a lot of information that is offered to online learners. Um, online learners also opt for social media pages and blogs to uh, gain knowledge. And uh, nowadays, even YouTube channels, there are a lot of YouTube channels which are offering free online learning and sometimes even paid online learning to these uh, learners. And uh, it is also often seen that online learners try to engage with people directly via personal messaging on these social media platforms. And uh, uh, on uh, and they also chat to uh, clarify about their doubts or to seek further information. Uh, but I would like to emphasize one more thing that when we talk about social media platform, you know, all of us think that uh, social media means social networking sites, but social media and social networking sites are completely two different things. When we say social media, it's a broader term. So social media means any kind of websites, blog pages, uh, or even social networking sites. So social networking sites actually come under social media platforms platforms and why social networking sites are different from social media platforms because social networking sites are actually allowing users to create their profiles and then network with people whereas social media platforms for those platforms you may not create any profile and you can maintain your anonymity and still gain information like on youtube channels you actually don't uh, reveal your identity and you can even uh, log in on youtube channel as guest 
so when we talk about uh, the cyber space and online learning because online learning is a part of cyber world so we need to understand that it is very important for online learners to actually understand the concept of cyber safety and why it is important for them to understand the concept of cyber safety because firstly it offers various benefits to the learners but as well as it allows these fraudsters to mask their identity because there is a concept of anonymity attached in the cyber world you don't know who's behind the window you don't know actually the face that you are seeing on your screen is actually that person or not specifically if we talk about social media platforms so it's very important today for online learners to understand the concept of cyber safety which is not just limited to you know uh, protecting or creating strong part passwords it's beyond that and why it is beyond that because sometimes and nowadays we are seeing that lot of learned people lot of uh, 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 phd holders lot of uh, professors lot of high uh, profile people are also getting trapped trapped into these cyber frauds so it's very easy for these online learners to also get uh, tricked by these uh, fraudsters and how they can trick these online learners into any kind of frauds firstly by job frauds we all know that uh, all of us sometimes or at some point of life uh, some point in our life want to acquire knowledge to gain good jobs so uh, for that sometimes these fraudsters also trick these online learners by posting some false uh, jobs and saying them that you have to pay some membership fees 1000 rupees or 5000 rupees and then you will get the job confirmation which further can lead to financial frauds how it can lead to financial frauds because uh, if the site also itself is compromised then the all, all the information that the online learners are entering whether it's their account information or pin whatever they are entering that can also get compromised and and in some cases it can also lead to cyber bullying and harassment which can further impact the uh, mental health status of these online learners so the premise of the study we have all understood that cyber safety is actually very important and because of that the inventory or or a tool was created to identify awareness about cyber safety and social media usage pattern of online learners and this tool this inventory was further content validated in which a series of expert uh, rated each items appropriateness comprehension as well as completeness the locale of the study is um, ncti of delhi ncr and delhi area and uh, the sample of the study are actually women college students and the inclusion criteria was women who are enrolled in any college and they should be user of at least one social media platform available in india and the exclusion criteria was if any woman is enrolled in any colleges outside of delhi ncr area so for development of this inventory firstly a thorough literature review was done in order to identify and create appropriate statements to measure the constructs as stated before then the pool of statements was created by the researchers and the state these statements were further given to uh, the series of experts primarily seven experts and content validation ratio was then calculated using loshi's method and content validation ratios uh, ratio varies between 1 and minus 1 the higher score indicates that uh, mo- uh, the experts are uh considering this statement as essential and uh, are considering that the statement can measure the construct after that data collection and reliability was done in which uh, data was collected through the self administered questionnaire which had 30 statements a study was done with a sample size of 50 respondents and respondents were selected as per the criteria uh, of the study that was explained before the tools have been validated and cronback alpha was calculated to ensure the reliability seven experts who completed and returned the relevance rating are as follows dr dhawal gupta who is a head of cyber law meti government of india major vineet kumar who is founder and global president of cyber peace foundation mr rakshit tandon who is cyber expert dr pavan dubbal who is a lawyer cyber law advocate supreme court of india ms nirali bhatia who is cyber psychologist and physiotherapist and also founder of uh, uh, cyberbab foundation and a tedx speaker dr ak mohapatra who is professor and hod it department at indira gandhi technical university of women and mr vijaypal singh sho cyber police station new delhi so the findings of the study revealed that the cvr value of the inventory was 
which is very unlikely but fortunately it came as one because all the experts marked all the statements essential but based on the sentence formation comprehension and sentence structure was uh, changed of the statements as per the suggestions which, which given by you the have experts another 2 minutes to go right further the cronbach alpha was calculated to measure the internal consistency of the tool which was 0.93 which is high and acceptable the findings of the study revealed that the statements of the inventory were appropriate and measures the construct uh, the inventory scores of women students uh, are as follows so less than 10 uh, 10% of the women uh, were there who scored less than 10 then a uh, less than uh, greater than 20 were only 38% and women who scored between 10 to 20 out of 30 were 52% so this further indicates that handful women learners have actually sound and good knowledge about cyber safety and security through the findings it is well understood that women students are opting for online learning methods but are not having sound awareness about cyber safety and hygiene practices due to this they are more vulnerable to get tricked by fraudsters it is henceforth essential for the organizations who are offering online learning platforms to create awareness about cyber safety measures and cyber hygiene practices for uh, all the online learners and primarily women learners to prevent themselves against any kind of cyber crimes while they are engaging into any online learning platforms further the tool can be adapted and used in other researches encompassing knowledge level for online learners about cyber safety thank you thanks richa thank you richa i have just one question uh, your sample size 50 do you think is uh, appropriate enough to come to this findings no ma'am actually this is an ongoing study we are further uh, uh, into, uh, we are further uh, uh, using this questionnaire and we are uh, distributing this questionnaire amongst various college students of delhi ncia but uh, since the 50 students have uh, given their test results so that is why i have presented it here i know the sample size is not uh, that much but we and are another thing is the gender that you mentioned so uh, you have uh... is all 50 they are female students or? yes ma'am all 50 are female students who are enrolled into any college of delhi ncr so your focus is only on this theme so you don't want to take the inputs of the male students uh no ma'am we are not uh, getting into so a comparative the... analysis maybe yeah it can be done in uh, future i may i may discuss it with my uh, my guide and we can do that okay thank you thank you okay. uh we can move to the next presentation manoj yeah yeah next is uh, miss ripu marsh but she is at 1 i think we have and 3 minutes to still for her to join so ripu you are on a mute madam yeah thank you manoj others also uh, those who are uh, listening to these uh, presentations if you have any question coming in mind you can put it in the chat uh, we might uh, take it as the question being posed so that way i think it will become a participative way and we all can give constructive inputs yeah Dr. Ripu has joined. Hmm. I don't see her name in the joint participant yeah. names. Dr. Ripu, are you there? we are not able to see your name in the part of participant list also still to one more minutes because i think she might join at 1 still 12:59 yeah. just great for me 
meanwhile shrutika you are there you can give a call to her professor bakshi good morning sir seeing to you, seeing you after a long time good morning good morning manoj how are you fine I... sir sir recognize kiya aapne ha ah, ha ah, bilkul bilkul okay. thank you fine thank you sir good morning ma'am binakshi here good morning sir all participants you can look it in the group uh, we have shared the opinion poll the audience poll so click on that link and you can give your marks also So I think Dr. Ripu is not even picking phone of my team. Maybe she, she has missed out the slot. So we'll see what has to be done for this. Okay, so I think in morning we had just three presentations. So uh, maybe all are waiting for someone else to start. That should not be the mode. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's how it is. And we have uh, tried to honor as much your preference for the uh, for your uh, as you have mentioned in the Google form, and that has put us uh, into a very hectic day tomorrow. But all of you be uh, there in time as per Dr. your... Dr. Vimal, there's a question in the chat. Uh, see, uh, we are not expert, maybe. Uh, and this is not, we are not going to take the session. The question, I uh, told you that during the presentation, if you have something coming, and just one or two questions that we asked to the presenter, uh, we will like to. But yes, uh, this question, because now we have time. Uh, before we close, we can take this. That how much knowledge is sufficient knowledge to be aware about the fraudster online when they are breaching the top security lock, locked sites too. So, Ikjot, uh, uh, I would not have been able to answer, but I have some exposure uh, on this area because we created one uh, module for Delhi Police on the cybersecurity and the social media and these hackings happening. So, on that context, I will just say that uh, track these uh, trackers and the hackers, they keep on updating themselves in technology. So it is never the so-called the sufficient thing. 
so if if there is someone else who is coming with a <laughs> some something to even break your door so so all 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 these things uh, you have to be so there are various standards and websites uh, and especially those government websites they have to be following multi layer security encryption and what not but then still there is scope of hacking and which has been proved by many many who are or, or if the speaker who was doing this research maybe if she can yeah, comment i on. was about to say ma'am yeah. that if you allow me i answer this question yeah, 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 because yeah. Uh, thank you for asking that question that's very but uh, this part is not going to be included in your evaluation yeah yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely so i have been working uh, with a lot of uh, people who are uh, actually cyber experts solving these cases and uh, through them i have come across one very insightful thing that firstly as users see uh, there are people who are actually tracking these fraudsters and they are trying to make every site secure so as a individual it's important for us to prevent ourselves and that's it that much that much knowledge is sufficient so if you are uh, maintaining cyber hygiene and by cyber hygiene i mean that whatever things you do not do physically and if you're doing it virtually then that means that you're not uh, following cyber hygiene practice to uh, simplify that uh, hum achanak se you know uh, i see randomly we don't go to somebody and uh, we ask uh, hi what is your name and can i be your friend but online we do that and we have been seeing that on linkedin and professional networking sites as well so this is not cyber hygiene sometime online learners maybe to seek uh, knowledge and maybe to network they uh, seek help of others or they contact different people but they have to be very mindful of uh, how much information they are uh disclosing about themselves and uh, how much security measures they themselves have adopted in terms of their device protection uh, all of us may have antiviruses in our laptops in our uh, in our uh, pcs in our systems but very handful of us will actually be having antiviruses in our phones so that is one thing which we have seen in india across online learners as well as uh, uh, young learners that they are not following this so there is no limit of actually you know uh, uh, saying ki kitni knowledge kafi or how much of knowledge is sufficient because as ma'am stated they are uh, using newer newer technologies to uh, track people koi bhi government ki uh, uh, koi scheme aayegi kuch bhi aayega immediately aapke paas usse related messages aane shuru ho jate hain immediately fraudsters start tracking you so we there is no limit the only limit is or the only way to protect yourself is be aware uh, of what is happening around you and be uh, very curious in exploring whether the information is correct or not i hope every one of yeah, us yeah. is a researcher thank, you. thank right. you thank you so much uh, i i just want to add one two things here so as she discussed about researching uh, there are three main tips to be to be safe from the cyber first if you are using your mobile phone for doing online then your phone should not have your banking apps so if you want to do it so make sure and in my last class also i said please make a separate bank, email account from which you have your all your research works online and all those things and your personal email should not be ported on to these kind of sites so always have two email ids one for your personal mails where you only interact with the your banks and all those things and there is a separate mail id for all these kind of a doing research and going to the sites and all those things so because there there are two different emails it will be very difficult for to run. and second if you have your bank details on your phone don't open these kinds of site through your phone because sometimes they plug a small apps which dictates the details out of your banking details so one of the major safe areas is to have two different accounts if you are doing research and all those things going to different sites and use a separate email id and for your personal work have a separate me email id and secondly never share your pins and the other things and all so the best way is you have two separate identity on the social media one personal which is to your friends and to your personal works and for doing such online learning and all those things you can use because if they even give you online certificate it will be on the name not on the email and okay. one tip i use uh, manoj i heard somewhere that uh, my two accounts where one where i do the online transaction hmm. has always a limited uh, fund so hmm. i i don't go 
<laughs> so yeah. the inspector i know this is the upper limit at uh, so, okay so thank you for so much uh, valuable information manoj you also added uh, to that and now we close and we'll be meeting at 3 okay. for the afternoon sessions thank so, you very much thank Thanks you thank you everyone thank you ma'am thank you sir thanks